Has the Victorian government learned anything about how to handle COVID during the past 16 months? From where we sit at the informer, the answer's got to be no. COVID has haunted the Andrews State Government for much of that period, and it's turned life for many Victorians into a nightmare. Why is it that Victoria appears to be the only state which is repeatedly going into lockdowns? And just last week, Victoria officially entered what it's now calling lockdown 4.0. Now, no other state in Australia, nor any country in the world has had to experience such an indignity. So how is it that Victoria's so-called roll gold contact tracing system continues to let the state down? The Premier, Daniel Andrews, and his deputy, James Molino, must be prepared now to answer some pretty tough questions, rather than do what they've always done over the last few months, and that's constantly look to blame someone else, whether it's the federal government or some other state, for their continuing failures. Now, we've got to add that the federal government hasn't been error-free during the pandemic. One, it's mucked up its handling of the national vaccine rollout, and that's plain for all to see. And two, it's also failed to protect all those it serves in the aged care sector, especially after the uh, especially damning findings of the Royal Commission, which were handed down only earlier this year. But at some point, Victorians will have to realise that they've allowed themselves to become virtual prisoners through their state government's continuing incompetence. Simply put, it's been a failure of leadership. Victorians deserve much better. But Victorians also ask also need to ask questions of the state government rather than accept the current narrative, which we keep hearing over and over again. People need to think a little more critically about what's been happening and not just blindly accept the ongoing excuses. Nothing is ever lost through questioning. Rather, more is gained, which could bring important change. But if you think about it, the last 16 months have brought much pain on Victorians. Many are suffering, whether it's from mental health or from an opportunity to try and do business. Small businesses have taken a fearful hit, as have employers everywhere. They want continuity. Government can't promise them that. State's economy has taken a hit because of the systems that are currently in place the government refuses to address. And because of that resistance, yep, the rest of Australia is also suffering. Hard as it is to believe, Victoria has become a big problem for the rest of the country. Through a combination of, what, what are we gonna say, arrogance and an unwillingness to learn from others, the Victorian government has managed to impact the lives of just about every Australian. So why is, after all this time, Victoria still trying to reinvent the wheel with its contact tracing system? A system which we've seen has come up short time after time. The Victorian government also continues to dismiss the successes of the other governments that are working quite wonders. New South Wales, for example, has an exceptional contact tracing team. So here's a question without notice for the Premier Daniel Andrews. What's wrong with following the lead from New South Wales and keeping the state open? I trust it's not a case of bloody mindedness fueled by a, a parochial rivalry at the heart of this dispute. And if that is the case, then the Victorian government has lost sight of what is best for Victoria, for Victorians, and for all Australians. Will the government admit that it's failed on contact tracing, which is why we've seen so much disruption? The Epping Woolworths fiasco is a perfect example of why Victoria is currently in lockdown 4.0. Our contact tracers repeatedly demonstrated a level of incompetence that is, uh, is stunning. No other way to describe it. So how did they get the Woolworths infection site in Epping so wrong? Confusing the Woolworths site with its sister store in the north, an assumption that has proved chaotic. But what did the government do? Well, what it's done for the last half a dozen months, it's blamed the confusion on something else. In this instance, a shopping receipt. Now, a lot can be said and much can be argued, but Victoria, is presenting daily as the Abbott and Costello Act, a comedy routine for all Australians to savour. And let us remember that Victoria is a key economic driver for the nation's economy. And that has been for quite some time. And when Victoria is locked down, all of Australians suffer. And that's exactly what's happening. 
How much longer can Victorians tolerate the incompetence of the state government when the rest of Australia is back to something resembling living a normal life, pretty much COVID free? Lockdown number two cost the Australian economy more than a billion dollars. Industry groups are now estimating that this current 14 day lockdown now will cost the state much, much more than that. Especially now that the seven day lockdown has become 14 days to help contain the spread of the virus. 500,000 people in Victoria are casual employees which means they're gonna have very little job security, especially without JobKeeper from the federal government. Now add to that the challenges of the small business owners who are simply furious with a state government support package of $250 million. It sounds like a lot, but it does nothing to genuinely ease the pain that their businesses are suffering. It's time for the Victorian government to up the ante. If it truly wants to engage in a bit of state rivalry and demonstrate to New South Wales and others that it can recover its status as a superior state, then it needs to be agile. And a little forward thinking needs to do something revolutionary. Maybe introduce rapid antigen testing. Now, rapid antigen testing could be the one way the Victorian government puts an end to the recurring COVID outbreaks. And would also put an end to having to resort to that blunt instrument that the state government has used over and over in the past to contain the virus. It's this over-reliance on a lockdown in order to get out of trouble. But until then, until it decides to do something different, it's becoming quite apparent with every lockdown that more and more people are starting to think that this Victorian government is clueless.